Hello and good evening. I'm Joy Holt and we're here on Inform tonight and tonight we've got Mark Mesmer. Hi Mark, how are you? Doing great. A busy week at the State House this week. Oh great. Let's so. hear all about what you guys are doing. What is right. this, the first quarter? Uh, we are in this. We are in the third quarter. I would okay. say, yeah, uh, early, mid, midway through the second half. So we're getting. We've got okay. about another week of committee hearings left next week. Then the then the following week we'll finish up, you know, amending and, and final right. passage of bills, and then the last the, the last two weeks of session are conference committee time. So we're getting we're getting close to the to the wrap up of, of committee committee work and. I had eight bills in committee this week, so I was about ready to pull my hair out <laughs> by, by the time Thursday committee time was done. Right. But it was it was a good week. Everything's moving along nicely. I've got six bills of mine in the house, and I've got one left to hear Tuesday next week. Uh, and and I probably had one of the most interesting, I guess, uh, experiences this week on on a bill that I had in committee Monday morning in the in the House Judiciary Committee. And, and people say, how do some of these things get you know, into bills? And, mm -hmm. and I'll call it a, a, a story of, of, of uh, how garbage can get into a bill that, you know, that sometimes you, you, don't, you don't want. Um, my house sponsor called me Monday morning and said, hey, we're, you know, we're over here in my office and, and we're going to hear your bill this morning and some guys are here with an amendment they want to they put in your bill. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay. I had just just walked in the door, and so I went over to his office, and and they were t talking about my bill was Senate Bill 283, and it deals with direct sales companies and and what in, and getting clarity of between what a direct sales company is and a, and a pyramid scheme, because mm -hmm. right now it's pretty vague. And in the title of the Attorney General's, you know, um, authority that this falls under, there's another another section on payday company lending mm -hmm. which has nothing to do with but it's in the same title so they thought well it's it's in the same title maybe we can jam this this amendment mm -hmm. you know in the marks bill and it had to deal with expanding some payday lending services and and what those are is basic there were super high interest rate loan programs and this one would have been 170 percent annual interest the way they were trying to set this up and right now those the payday loan program stop at six hundred and five dollars I think mm -hmm. and this would have taken it up to like a thousand or fifteen hundred and and I said I said I really don't think that this is gonna you know m meet the germaneness test of, I mean when it comes back to the you know to the Senate and I really don't like that type of loan program and I don't really want it in my bill mm -hmm. so um, but the chairman of the of a committee where I was going to have my bill heard had pretty much talked to all their committee members ahead of time, and they were ready to put it in. But when I was presenting my bill, I you know I asked them you know to please consider just holding my bill you know there for a week. Let's talk about it more thoroughly so the committee members actually knew what it was right. before they voted you know to stick it in there. And uh, so then Monday, the rest of the day, and Tuesday, I met with. You know, there's 13 members on that committee, and and I reached out to seven of them, um, and a couple more that I hadn't, but you know, I think other folks had talked to them uh, to get them to oppose putting that you know into my bill the following Monday. And by Tuesday evening, my house sponsor called and said, "Yeah, we've talked enough from our members, and we realize this is not going to pass, so we're just not going to offer the amendment." But if he wouldn't, I mean, and I don't even know why he called me. I mean, it. He could have just as easily met with these guys, had the amendment ready. They didn't, you know, they didn't even tell me they were working on it, mm -hmm. um, and jammed it in there, and mm -hmm. and then it would have been, you know, fight like heck to get it out. So why would they want to increase the amount of money and then the interest? How? What was the benefit of adding this? Uh, it would. The, they think it would help people who who are kind of in the niche of they don't qualify for a loan, you know, traditional bank loan, you know, the $600 limit on payday services is not enough. Um, and I guess I think those are capped at like 36%, mm -hmm. which is still pretty high. Right. Um, they said this would allow them to have a little bit higher access to, you know, to cash, but keep them out of the loan shark, you know, mm -hmm. uh, programs where, you know, Cousin Louie, <laughs> I was just <laughs> families, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, 
<laughs> but it, it really is, I mean, it's not a, and they had a bill in the Senate in, in the first half of session that was similar to that that got voted down in mm -hmm. committee. So I think they were just looking for another way right. to tweak it a little bit and, and stick it in somewhere else, but I didn't, I didn't want that as part of my legislation. So you have to keep up on your toes with all the reading? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, it's good to hear that you do that, oh, everybody. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You need to. <laughs> then later on uh, Monday, I'm working with Representative Braun on a bill that deals with car, cars that get towed and, and, and if, you know, sometimes if you abandon a vehicle and they, they tow it to a, a storage yard and nobody comes to claim it, you know, the process of, of you know, selling off the, you know, the mm -hmm. abandoned cars or if it's a car that has a, a, you know, a lien on it, like a car loan on it, mm -hmm. cleaning up the process of, of how to get, you know, how to auction the car, how to have notice, you know, who gets the funds when it's, you know, when it's sold off. I mean, that legislation hadn't been worked on for a long time, you know, 10 or 15 years, and it just needed some updating and, and worked with the towing companies, the banks, the, the uh, credit unions to, to get the legislation cleaned up in a, in a pretty good format and that, that bill passed out unanimously out of committee on Monday in the in the civil law committee. So I've, the first, these last couple of years in the Senate, I've nev never had bills that I had in criminal law, civil law, or judiciary committee, and it's, it's a room full of attorneys, so they're usually <laughs> very uh, interesting questions that come up in those hearings. Uh. But I uh, did get, a, get that passed out of committee on Monday, then Wednesday I had three bills. Um, it, uh, one was um, House Bill 1100, and it's updating. I guess there's always been, a there, for the first 170 years of our statehood, there was archives put together of, of legislative history. Mm -hmm. um, it, they just let it run out in 1978, and this will be you know, updating you know, historical records from 78 to, 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 to today. Mm -hmm. um, working with Matt Lehman on that one. Uh, Representative Arnold and mm -hmm. I are working on a helmet bill for ATV use, you know, off-road mm -hmm. use for, for children under 18. Did that pass yet? Uh, it passed out of committee uh, unanimously on Wednesday. Okay. And it'll go to the, the Senate floor next week, and I, I'm quite certain it'll pass yes. probably unanimously. It, there might be a couple no votes right. from folks who just don't want any government interference at sure, all. Sure. But on a motorcycle, you have to wear a helmet if you're under 18. Mm -hmm. This just applies the same rules to off-road usage because, you know, the ATVs, there was a, a, a girl in, in Boonville that was killed uh, about a year and a half ago when one rolled over on her and, and, and crushed her skull. Other than that, she didn't have a scratch on her. Right. Um, just this past week, a, a, a boy in Pike County mm -hmm. was killed when his uh, ATV flipped and he didn't have a helmet right. on. So I think there was 23 deaths on ATVs uh, in 2016. There had been 17 the year before. We're one of the few states that has you know, doubled de almost. Yeah. Well, not doubled, Hel but yeah, I mean, de you know, deaths increasing. Most mm -hmm. other states that have implemented, you know, helmet rules, they're, they're right. seeing a pretty steady decline. Right. So, um, pretty good safety measure. Um, also on Wednesday, look at my list here, I have to, <laughs> oh, um, Senate Bill 129 was passed out of, of Transportation Committee, that's the regional uh, road funding bill. Okay. That got sent to the to the Ways and Means Committee, I think they're gonna, you know, it just because it has tax provisions in it, they have to give it a thumbs right. up yet. Why do they call it the Ways and Means Committee? I have no idea. What, what does that they, mean? Why don't they just call it the Budget Committee? Yes. That's, that's, <laughs> I guess it's the 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 ways we fund government and the you know, the ways and means of how we fund government. But right. in the Senate, we call it appropriations, which is a little better than ways right. and means. But I think One word. <laughs> at Congress and here, they call the House Committee, that's the Budget Committee, mm -hmm. they call it the Ways and Means Committee. So, strange name. <laughs> when I'm in public talking, I usually just say the Budget Committee. Right. Because people get that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would get that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then on Thursday, I had... Um, a couple of bills, two of them were, were one, one is a bill that deals with um, duplicative reporting of um, if, if you're a small business and mm -hmm. you have to submit the same type of record to more than one agency, you know, we asked the Office of Management and Budget, we asked we, uh, Legislative Services, who keeps track of, you know, I mean, if you pass multiple laws and you have people require businesses to submit the same information to more than one group. Mm -hmm. 
nobody nobody really knew what if there were how many duplicative duplicative laws on the books. So we're going to set up the Indiana Economic Development Corporation on their website, a place for businesses to if they have a duplicate filing requirement of the same info, we're going to let them gather the information and in the, in the house there's a there's a committee called uh, government waste and oversight committee mm -hmm. so they'll each year they'll submit a report of where they've people have turned in you know duplicative filing uh, requirements and and then look at ways to eliminate you know laws right. or consolidate you know you know you know what what agency is going to take that and then split it to the multiple multiple groups that need it mm -hmm. so just a way to streamline it government and that and passed out of, uh, I think that was in civil law maybe, no, no. Um, gosh, I can't remember which committee that was in in the House, had somebody this week. And then I had, uh, we had another bill that repeals obsolete inheritance tax laws. We repealed the inheritance tax a few years ago, but there's still inheritance tax rules you know, on right. the state books. So it was just stripping out obsolete standards. So, it, so is there like a flat tax for inheritance, or is it it's all no, very? There's no inheritance tax in Indiana. Oh, okay. Anymore. It's eliminated. Okay. But when they eliminated the tax, they didn't eliminate all of the rules that were on the books. You thought if okay. they repealed it, they would have gone back and. Okay, so they repealed it, and then there was still stuff existing. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Very weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was just a bill just to strip those out. And the last bill I had on Thursday morning before session started was a, a broadband community readiness program where we're trying to implement uh, how to make that process you know, more effective in, in getting broadband extended to more customers. And then part of that is uh, we have a universal service fee as part of your phone bill. Mm -hmm. And right now that's dedicated to getting you know, phone service out to unserved customers. And there really are you know, almost nobody that doesn't have at least cell service. Mm -hmm everywhere and we're going to look at studying ways to use that uh, universal service fee to ex you know start extending more wired broadband service you know fiber service to more homes so just Rural try to, Indiana will love that, that exactly <laughs> right we're, we're looking at ways to try to make you know more fiber broadband mm -hmm. hardwired service to you know to to more of rural America That's wonderful. and I think there's some federal legislation being proposed to change you know, you know how the federal government. You know they've got a, a federal program on uh, universal service fee as well, and I, you know they're they're talking about the, the rules are looking at changing at the federal level to allow that to go to broadband service as well. So nice, very nice. Yes. No, I mean party lines have been gone for a while, right? So, That's yeah. right. <laughs> I remember those when we were <laughs> when we were kids. <laughs> So, yeah, yep. your neighbor could listen to everything. Oh yeah, which now we just tell everyone and everything anyway. So yeah, yeah. pretty well. <laughs> Social media, we just broadcast yes. our lives to the world. I do have a couple bills uh, on hearing next week. Senate Bill 355. Okay, um, is one where we're going to have uh, sex abuse education training requirements for teachers and students, uh, grades K through 12. Mm -hmm. uh, it passed the Senate unanimously. Uh, finally, convinced the the House Education Chairman to give it a hearing. There was a, a, a program up in Northwest Indiana last week where they had, you know, they called No More Secrets. It was, it was a program they had taken out to all the schools in the Lake County, Northwest Indiana area. They had 71 students because they don't, they, I, right now that training of students and teachers on sex abuse issues is, is optional. Okay. Well, some schools are doing it, some are not. They do a pretty decent job around here. Mm -hmm. Uh, they had 70, 71 students after the, those programs were held in the schools up there that came forward and said, you know, I've been a victim of sex abuse sure. you know, within my, you know, within my family, within a relative, you know, friends. And when they brought that information to him from, you know, last week's community forums that mm -hmm. they had in all the schools in, in the Lake County area, he said, wow, that's, I was really stunned that there was that much of that going on and, and schools weren't, you know, participating in that program sure. so uh, he finally agreed to, to uh, hear that Tuesday morning so so is this training to help teachers spot spot it and then and 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 age-appropriate um, material taught to the kids okay. to where mm -hmm. and when I, I'm a Cub Scout leader have mm -hmm. been for 25 years and, and every year we do a program called it happened to me mm -hmm. and it's videos just of situational uh, 
awareness where maybe a neighbor or a sibling or mm -hmm. you know just role playing and, and if, it, if this happens do you tell somebody mm -hmm. tell a teacher mm -hmm. tell a friend tell a parent right. tell somebody you know right. and and don't don't let it be a secret right. you know tell somebody you trust and the earlier you intervene and get help for people that are in that scenario you know the the better chance they have of, of mm -hmm. you know being you know healed right. uh, the statistical evidence of, of suicide rates drug abuse rates uh, you know, really destructive behaviors for people who have been victimized by sex mm -hmm. abuse when they're a, a young kid. I mean, it's exponentially higher than the general public. So, uh, trying to get earlier intervention. So, if if it passes, mm -hmm. then all schools. Do you guys have a program in place that you're going to implement? Have you hired yeah. someone? Or? Um, the Department of Education will will have free material ready for mm -hmm. you know all schools. They can they can download it from the DOE. Mm -hmm. They currently have it available. Right now, the, the DOE, the State Department of Education, has the material prepared and, and available, but it's it's only for grades two through five mm -hmm. that they have it prepared for. That will give them about a year to get it ready for grades K through 12. You can you can go to their website, download the material, use that as, as your, part of your your teacher mm -hmm. you know education program before before school starts, and then sometime between the start of the year and, we, and we've got till December 15th. That needs to be, you know, then that information needs to be, you know, right. shown to the kids. Okay. So, and then. Um, so the steps are in place. Steps already. are in place. Okay. Yeah. Great. And the content of what the grades two through five program had to be, I mean, basically the, you know, what needed to be in it is already, you know, that was a passed in 2012. Okay. We're just saying expand it to all grades, mm -hmm. and not you may show it, you shall show it, you mm -hmm. shall do it, mm -hmm. and then you know the teachers typically, you know. Uh, during the summer, either, either at the end of the school year, beginning of the school year, is when they would have their their continuing ed, mm -hmm. you know, requirement met. Um, it, and even the the continuing education for that, uh, I mean, there's a lot of programs available. You can do that. You, know, you can even do that online, mm -hmm. you know, on your, at your own time. Sure. So, just a be, being aware of, of of looking for for trouble signs, and and when you are told as a teacher, or as a you know, uh, you know, for me as a person that, that works with youth mm -hmm. when you see it you have a you have a legal requirement to, to notify law enforcement mm -hmm. or, or Department of Child Service I mean you have to report it right and right now there's there's no requirement for them to report either oh, really? or at least not in school policy right this will be this will be a requirement that you don't not, you know the teacher is not going to report it to the principal the teacher is going to report it to right there will be a, pro a state protocol pro protocol now. Okay. where to go okay so great got to try to help kids yes oh my gosh yeah really so, so was that your last one that was or was it. that everything that's it okay. for this week okay all right so, you were very busy it was a busy week i'm glad to hear it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's been inform here with mark mesmer and i'm joy holt